Revheads, Santina and Will from Rebel Recycles coming to you from Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really glad that you're here. Today, we wanted to do a video all about our drag bike. Last week, we shared a video of, uh, of it going down the track at the Test and Tune. We got a lot of really great feedback about that, and we realized we've talked about the drag bike a lot, but we've never really given you any specifics about it. So today, we're going to do just that. We're going to show you what makes this a drag bike and why that's different from your street motorcycle. So let's get into it. To start off, let's define a few drag racing terms so that you can follow along through the video. The first term we'll, dis we'll define is ET or elapsed time. Elapsed time is the amount of time it takes the vehicle to go from the start line to the finish line. RT or reaction time is how long it takes the rider to cross the start line once the, the light turns green and you have the okay to go. You'll hear us talk about quickest and fastest. Those are not the same thing. So quickest is uh, the time that it takes to go down the track. Fastest is the speed that you're going when you go down the track. And then there's the Christmas tree. So the Christmas tree or the tree is the electronic lighting system that's between the two riders or in the center of the track that's timed and lets you know what, when it's your turn to go. Easy. So we consider ourselves to be very lucky indeed. Our local track here is Sydney Dragway. It's located in Western Sydney at Eastern Creek and it is a world-class facility. It's really fantastic and 30 minutes from our door. How lucky is that? So we don't have a lot of travel time like a lot of racers do. Uh, we have the opportunity to attend a lot of the events and really wonderful facility right in our back door. Now, Sydney Dragway is an IHRA drag strip. IHRA is the International Hot Rod Association. I have an IHRA racing license. I have to have that to race this motorcycle. And we race in the IHRA Modified Bike class. Modified Bike is sponsored by BikeReview.com at Sydney Dragway, and we definitely want to say their name out loud because we're really grateful for anybody that sponsors drag racing. So thank you very much, BikeReview.com. Thanks for getting behind a Modified Bike. Now, IHRA Modified Bike is a class for motorcycles that run 11.999 or quicker. That is how you qualify for that class. So Double Tap is purpose built to race in the Modified Bike class. Modified Bike is bracket racing. And so what that means is that you, you dial in the time that you're going to run and then you have to get as close to that as possible without going over. The rider that comes closest wins. So on race day, we have a few qualifying runs so we can see how things are running that day and how the bike is doing for the conditions. We get an idea of what, what that base looks like. Then we dial in the time that we say we're going to run. And then the person that says, that does what they say they're going to do without breaking out or going quicker than that time wins. Just that easy. Let's talk about some of the components on this motorcycle that make it a drag bike. Uh, we're not going to talk about the engine because, frankly, we've done that. You know it's an 865 and we've gone through uh, most of the engine stuff already anyway. What we're going to focus on is what makes this drag bike a drag bike, right? And what's really different about that from something you ride on the street. Uh, we'll start with the front forks. This is an ICS race fork. Uh, and it's very strong, very light, and when I say very light, I mean very light. This entire fork assembly, triple trees, uh, fork tubes, axle, with the wheel in it, the disc brake on it, and the tire on the wheel, including the risers and the handlebars, is lighter than the original equipment front wheel, tire, tube, and brake disc. So effectively, this fork assembly has eliminated the entire weight of the original equipment fork assembly. Uh, but it is very specifically built for drag bikes, and it's not something you'd use on your street bike at all, full stop. 
not a street bike front end, strictly drag race only. Same thing is true of the wheels. These wheels are RC components, uh, RC comp wheels, and they are specifically made the right size for the slicks, and they are drag race only wheels. They are super light, super strong, but absolutely not made for the street. Um, the same thing would be true of the brakes. This bike has wildwood brake calipers on it. While they're a very effective brake caliper for a drag bike that you only have to pull down from speed at the end of the track, the, these particular calipers, not that Wildwood doesn't make street calipers, because they do, but these particular calipers, you, they're super small, you wouldn't want to run them, uh, they are super light. You wouldn't want to run them on your street bike at all. So, uh, then there is a Scott's Pro Stabilizer, this guy. Now this, you might run on your street bike, the Scott's Pros, they make them for all kinds of different bikes and you would run a steering stabilizer for a lot of different reasons. Uh, on a drag bike, it is really there for when you shut the bike off on the big end of the racetrack and all the weight transfers from the back wheel to the front, uh, things can get squarely in a hurry and that stabilizer makes a big difference. So really pretty handy to have and something that's, that's necessary on a drag bike. Then there is the air shifter. We get, you know, constantly people are going, oh, does this have uh, nitrous on it? Because they see this bottle, right? The bottle is a reservoir for an air shifter. This is an air over electric shifter. So there's bottle, there's air pressure in this bottle that is triggered by an electric solenoid that both triggers this air cylinder and cuts the ignition on the bike at the same time. So you get instant shift. So the rider can shift with this air shifter one of two ways. They can either push the button or they can determine before they ever start to run that they want the bike to auto shift. Uh, and they can, you know, they, they can set a specific RPM and the bike will shift at that RPM every time. It's strictly up to the rider. There are, to go along with that, there are a couple of safety switches built in. There are two safety switches up here also race only kind of components. Uh, one of them has a tether that is attached to the rider's jacket. So if for any reason the rider and the motorcycle are separated, that switch shuts down everything on the bike. It shuts down the main power of the bike instantly uh, and that's all. The other one is a safety switch for the auto shifter. So if, you, if the rider doesn't want to auto shift, they leave this pin in and if the rider wants the bike to auto shift, they pull that pin out before they launch the bike and it'll auto shift. Um, then there is, so that those are obviously a, a, an auto shifter, air shifter, that stuff's all really drag race only. Um, then there is a two-step uh, and a centrifugal clutch. So when the rider is launching this bike, uh, a two-step rev limiter uh, is a device that stops the RPM at a certain level and you can set where you want that to be. When the clutch is pulled in, they can set the RPM to anything they like. So on the line, you pull the clutch in, pin the throttle, the RPM will come up to a specified RPM and sit there uh, until you let the clutch go. When you let the clutch go, the RPM goes free, goes on to the second step, so two step. Uh, and that's combined with a centrifugal lockup clutch. So when you're riding this bike, you've got two choices. You can either Put it on the two-step, let the clutch go, and it, the centrifugal clutch will lock up and you go. Or you can choose to let the bike idle and let the clutch out. And when you turn the throttle, the centrifugal clutch will come on and off you go. So lots of variables. But those things are all drag race only, not the kind of thing you'd run on the, on the street. Then this bike has an extended alloy swing arm and a twin drive setup. This twin drive is done specifically to allow us to get a wide slick under the back of the bike. Uh, this tire is too wide for the original equipment chain uh, and sprocket alignment. It would This chain would go right into the tire. So to get this tire wide enough and get it in the center of the motorcycle, uh, that's what this twin drive system is all about. Then there is the wheelie bar and strut system and that is there to minimize the front wheel lift as the bike launches and obviously to keep it from wheeling, but it really is about controlling the bike. What we want this bike to do is hook the tire up, wrinkle it a little bit, and gently lift the front wheel as it launches and pull straight off the line. Uh, so it is about 
getting all the adjustments right to make the bike launch solid, hard, and straight um, and keep all the traction you possibly can on the ground. And that's all run through a set of Mickey Thompson slicks that are no tread, very light tires, very sticky that stick to the racetrack. Uh, again, the tire is absolutely not something you'd run on the street. There are a number of other differences uh, between this and a street bike. Uh, for example, uh, a stock GT full of fuel uh, on the scales at the racetrack weighs 211 kilos. This bike, race ready with fuel in it on the same scales, weighs 170 kilos. So we've pulled a lot of weight out of this bike. We've also made the bike quite a bit longer. A uh, longer bike makes it more stable at high speeds. Um, we are also running uh, race fuel in this. It's, uh, fuel, the fuel that we're running in this is over 100 motor octane. Um, we have the rev limiter turned up on this motor um, to the point that we are actually shifting this at roughly the original equipment motorcycle's red line. Big difference, not something you'd want to do with your street motor. Uh, and the gearing is obviously very different with this. This gearing is, is very specifically set up to be crossing the quarter mile finish line in high gear at peak torque. So it's the, the gearing, you work with the gearing to find that objective uh, and that's where this one's currently set up. So lots of things that are really very different from what you do with your street bike. Okay, so you've built an awesome drag bike. <laughs> How do you ride the thing? There's a lot that goes into drag racing. It's a very mental sport, like you have to be really focused and prepared for it. Uh, there's a lot that goes into just, you know, before you line up at the starting line, you want to make sure that you pick a good line on the track. We like to ride in the tire tracks from the cars. because There's lots of rubber there and you get really good traction. When I roll up to the start line and I hit that first beam, the first light will come on and that's pre-stage. Pre-stage is where you have to prepare your body for racing. That's when I get myself positioned on the seat, I get my feet in the right position so that they can go right up on the pegs, and I am ready to go. Because as soon as I creep forward that little bit more, I'm staged, and that is my indicator to the officials that I'm ready to race, and at any time they can hit the trigger and we're gone. When they hit the trigger, ideally, uh, a good racer leaves the light within one one hundredth of a second. I'm working on that part. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting there. Once that happens, it is clutch out, throttle up, ride in a straight line, get all your shifts perfect, be aware of the rider next to you but not focused on them, and it's all over in 11 seconds, and then you have to slow down safely and stably. So, you know, it all happens so quickly, so all of the preparation to get you there really is the, the hardest part of it. Sounds easy. Oh, yeah. So, people yeah. tell me all the time how easy it is. I'm, I always tell new riders, it's, it, the experience, I think, is very much like being a modern-day gunslinger. Uh, because you are, when you roll up to the line and get everything set and you're pre-staged, it... To do it well, it really is about focus and concentration, and you have to tune everything else out. It is absolutely tunnel vision, and it's, it's probably the ultimate tunnel vision because you're looking down a quarter mile tunnel. It, it looks like a tunnel when you're sitting on the line, and it is all about getting to the other end in exactly the time you said you were gonna get there. When, those, when that Christmas tree starts blinking down lights, things start happening really quickly. And it is, like you said, uh, that one one hundredth of a second, it's you against the rider in the other lane. Uh, and it's, you gotta go for your gun and pull that trigger and get it all to happen within one one hundredth of a second. And then the 10 or 11 seconds after that, everything happens pretty quick. So it really is sort of the ultimate in focus and concentration. And when you get to the other end of a perfect run, there is no adrenaline rush in the world good. like it. Mm -hmm. It's it's a good thing. That's what yeah. keeps us going back. Yeah. Like yeah. it's 
the best good feeling that there is. It's really <laughs> good. Like you, it's really hard to start racing, and it can be really overwhelming when you first pull up to the line, and there's so many things to consider and think about, and you want to get it right. And at that stage, you don't have a lot of muscle memory or experience, and then one day you get it right. It just clicks. That's magic. It's a beautiful thing. That is, it's magical. It's so good. <laughs> And that's the hook. Yeah. So what sort of results have we seen with from stock to the build? Hmm. When we first started racing, we went out May 1st, 2019. That was the first time I had ever drag raced. I'd never gone down the strip before. I was really, really nervous. We took two completely stock 650s. And on my first pass, I went 15.67 seconds at 85.36 miles per hour. Which is actually pretty typical for a stock 650 first pass out. We've had several riders go since and that's not unusual. Yeah, so it's as much the rider as the motorcycle. Yeah. By the end of the night, I'm happy to say I had brought it down to 14.93 at 88.49 miles per hour. Now that night, Will, who has raced a lot, he got the bike down to 14.43 seconds at 89.17 miles per hour. So he was nearly half a second quicker than me. But only half a second quicker. Now, flash forward to this bike, lots of runs down the strip. My personal best ET is 11.746. That run was made at 111.13 miles per hour. And then my fastest was 111.34. And that pass was at 11.94 seconds. So the quickest pass isn't always the fastest pass. But that last t test and tune. Well, at the last test and tune. So we've said this bike was purpose built for mod bike. And what that means is it needs to be quicker than 11 quick needs to run 11.99 or quicker uh, and do that consistently. Uh, and to win races in IHRA modified bike, you have to be consistent. You have to build a motorcycle that can run the same time every time and or you have to be able to say, here's how quick I'm gonna go today and that's how quick you need to go. Well, through all the development we've done, this bike was specifically purpose-built to do just that. And at the last test and tune, which was, uh, we've done all the changes we're gonna do, this motorcycle is now ready to race. At the last test and tune, we did four passes, and the uh, of those four passes, the, the spread in elapsed time was 0.161 seconds. So less than two tenths of a second and 0.24 miles an hour, so just over two tenths of one mile an hour. That is a competitive motorcycle. So we're done. This bike is ready to race, and we're gonna race, knock wood, the whole season with the bike just like it's sitting here. Now, we've been asked over and over, could we make this bike go faster? Absolutely, we could, you know, for example, it's, uh, this thing's making a little over 80 horsepower now. We could instantly plug nitrous into it and make it over 100 horsepower. Uh, but we don't need to do that to win races. In fact, if you do something like that, you can make it more difficult to keep it consistent. So this bike is built to accomplish exactly what it is accomplishing. And that kind of goes to what we've been talking about all along. You know, plan what your build is and build the bike to that plan, and this is an example of just that. So knowing that the bike is running that well and that it's that consistent, like that, this is what we've been testing and, and preparing for. Um, we're ready to race. We're ready. Yeah, we're definitely ready to race. I've definitely improved as a, a rider, and looking forward to a winning season. Yeah. Be so great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, use all the support we can get. I feel like I've got the bike that I could win with, so yeah. I think we've got a good chance. I mean, there's a lot of luck in racing as well. Yeah, well, anybody that ever won a championship had to be skillful, but there was, there was a little luck involved. Definitely yeah. some luck. Uh, we also, we wanted to answer some of the frequently asked questions that we get about the motorcycle. I wrote them down. 
Uh, the most common question we get asked, I think we kind of addressed it already with the components, is can I use these wheels on my street bike? We know Royal Enfield riders love cast wheels. Yeah, well the real answer is, while there are, there, at least to my knowledge at this moment, there are no wheels similar to this that will just bolt on uh, a Royal Enfield street rideable motorcycle. Uh, RC Components does make a number of different, and there are some other manufacturers that make a number of different sort of wheel blanks that could be machined up and made to work. Uh, but these specific wheels, absolutely not. They are not designed for street use at all. They are very strong and very, very light, but only in one direction. They are only meant to be strong and light going straight. If you, especially these front wheels, you absolutely would not put that on a heavier motorcycle that was turning under force at speed because they're not made to take a side load. It would at be all. dangerous. So absolutely so not. Do they're, not do it. These wheels are not for a street bike. The other thing is how about this exhaust? Is can I use this on my street bike? Yeah, that's we get that all the time. Um, well they you, look cool. They do look cool and they sound cool, but you really wouldn't want these these drag pipes on your street bike anyway. They call them drag pipes for a reason. Uh, it's just a wide open pipe. It is a tuned length and it is, it is what it is specifically to allow the most horsepower at the high, at high RPM wide open throttle. Uh, it, these pipes, if you just bolt them on your street bike, will make the, the thing run like crap and you won't be able to tune it to make any real torque. It will just kill the torque um and, and it, it's silly to yeah it's to run overkill. pipes like this it's not the right on a street tool. bike it's it's really the wrong thing full stop so you really wouldn't want an exhaust like this on your street bike so don't do that either. don't do that that's a bad idea yeah okay next why don't we do burnouts at the racetrack oh let me answer this one yeah you'll see uh well, the simple answer is because this motorcycle is specifically designed not to need to. Uh, we, and in fact, I, we've got plenty of evidence. This thing, when it launches, it wrinkles the slick, sticks it to the ground, never spins a tire, pulls away from the line and lifts, doesn't jerk the wheel up, but lifts the wheel as it moves away and does a nice smooth straight launch without ever slipping the tire. Uh, and that's because we've got the right weight, geometry, clutch, system. You know, it's it's not uh, it's not an accident. Well, and uh, it's the it tire. And, and it is the Mickey tire. Mickey Thompson it's, specifically it's tire. says yep. that you know you need no or limited you know burnouts. Especially for this if to you've got the weight and the clutch and everything right. So, um, and tires are expensive. And you know what's the point? Burnouts are cool. They look cool. And there, sure. while well, there are certainly. Uh, drag configurations that do need to do a burnout and heat the tire up this particular configuration we don't need to do it so why waste a tire absolutely yeah. i'm super frugal and i just i hate waste <laughs> yeah. okay now uh why do we use miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour when we talk about drag racing well i think that's probably because uh, worldwide the standard when you get a time slip pretty much anywhere in the world, it's elapsed time in seconds and your speed is in miles per hour. They, they also put kilometers per hour on there, so. Well, they only do that at street meets. That's at right. At actual races yeah. or IHRA sanctioned events, they only put they miles, only use they miles don't per use hour. kilometers. Yeah. So, it's, a, so it's, a, it's sort of a international standard yeah. for drag racing, so yeah. they all use miles. Drag racers just speak mile per hour. Yeah. Which is good for us, because we're fluent in yeah. miles, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, next, why would anyone do something so foolhardy and crazy? Oh, why wouldn't you? Why it's wouldn't so you? Much it's so fun. much fun. Hell yeah. I but also, I don't like, get that at all. we use this as our test bike. We've yeah. learned so much about these motorcycles because we've put this bike through its paces. So there's a lot of research and development that goes into street bikes, that comes from drag racing. Well, and... You know, bear in mind we're Royal Enfield dealers as well, and we the one of the other reasons for building this bike and using this platform is when when we first well when I first got the chance to see the inside of one of these engines, and when we saw the quality of the build of the first bikes, 
we sort of instantly knew these things would make a really strong race bike and we are supremely confident that you know this kind of racing will showcase just how durable these things really are plus our customers love it yeah one of our first times out of the track this old guy you know comes up and says you racing a vintage motorcycle what are you doing racing a vintage motorcycle like this and he had thought that Royal Enfields hadn't been made for decades. So I think that's also really important that we get the word out that Royal Enfield has been making motorcycles since 1901. They're very capable, they're very well built, and you can do anything with them. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, last question. What is the top speed of this motorcycle? Oh, I don't have any idea because that's not what this motorcycle is built for. Uh, I can tell you that in a quarter of a mile, it goes 111 miles an hour or 178 kilometers an hour. But what is the terminal velocity of this bike? I have no clue. No uh, idea. That's just not what it's for. I mean, you know, we have, I've seen the videos uh, on YouTube of folks out there riding their motorcycles, flat stick, wide open throttle on the public roads, and we would just never support that kind of activity. That's just that's not fun that's dangerous and it's you're endangering dangerous. other people that's that's really please, not please a don't good thing to do. do that yeah. yeah yeah we would never encourage that it's just it's not the thing to do it's not the thing if to you want to do if you want to go racing let's go racing absolutely right? so look our race season starts in february yeah. um there is a big event out there, the Nitro Slam, which we're very excited to be a part of. And then shortly thereafter, our, the track championships start, which is an eight round series. Yep. Um, but this year, we have also decided we want you to drag race. We would love to have you out there with us. So we're gonna start teaching drag racing classes. Yep. yep. So what we'll do is before there is a bike night out there, we're going to host classes here. We'll do small groups so that we can really focus our attention on you. And we'll walk you through the process of what it's like to drag race. We want you to go out there prepared and confident that you know what to do. We want you dressed properly so that you'll pass scrutineering. Same, we wanna make sure that your bike will pass scrutineering. You've got the right license to do it. You can race on a street license and you can race on a restricted street license. So. We will take you through the process, and then as a group, we'll go out on a bike night, and we will see what all the fuss is about. Because we are sure that once you cross that finish line, you'll be hooked. That's it. Forever. So good. It is such big fun. It's so much joy, we have to share it with the world. That's it. If you're interested in learning how to drag race, make sure that you follow us on social media. We will post the events there. We'll do like a ticketed event so that yep. we get the, the a small amount of people in. And make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, share the video, and leave a kind comment below. And remember, if you ain't having fun, you're doing it wrong.